The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Righteous God, our merciful Master, you own the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. One day, a high school teacher was lecturing on company slogans and was trying to ascertain how familiar some of the students were with regards to more common slogans. Joey asked, what airline uses the slogan, come fly the friendly skies? And Joey gave the right response, United. And... The teacher asked, what company uses the slogan, don't leave home without it? And Ann gave the right credit card company. John, the teacher asked, who uses the phrase, just do it? John replied, my mother. Earl Fritz was a doer. At the age of 81, he was the mayor of Iowa Falls, Iowa, but that's the easy part. In his 50s, he quit his teaching job to take on a new career, selling Bibles. He bought 10,000 Bibles from a publishing house that was getting out of the Bible business, and he sold every one of them. In fact, he went on to establish the Riverside Book and Bible House, which at one time was selling over $30 million a year in merchandise. Earl Fitz was starting a new career when many folks are contemplating winding theirs down. Earl Fitz didn't buy into the classic American line, I've done my time, now I'm gonna sit back and enjoy some easy living. I think Jesus loves the Earl Fitzes of this world. One day a master goes away on a long journey and he entrusts his estate to three stewards. To one he gives five talents. Now, 
A talent was a huge amount of a denomination, just an incredible amount of money. So five talents was a, an amazing amount of money. To one, he gives five talents. To the other, he gives three talents. And to another, he gives one talent. When he returns, he asks for an accounting. And two of the three, the ones with the, uh, the, the five talents and the three talents, well, they present the original money to their master, plus the money that they have gained in his absence. They say, here, this is what we've earned for you. And the master says, well done, now good and faithful servants. But the third one, the one with the one talent, had buried it in the ground. He went and dug it up, gave it to the master. And the master said, well, why didn't you at least put it in a bank so you could draw some interest? And the steward said, because I was afraid. And this parable ends with the poor fellow being punished. The message is clear. To be a Christian is to do something with what we have been given. What we have here is a practical teaching from our Lord from which all of us could profit. No pun intended. Okay, maybe pun intended. Here's the first thing. Life is a gift. It's so sad to see healthy, intelligent, talented people adopt a doom and gloom attitude about life. It's true that there are times when circumstances can get us all down, especially with what's all's happening in our world today. But even so, and perhaps because it's so important that we realize that life is a precious gift from God. A Baptist pastor tells about a time a man visited his church one Sunday, sat in the front pew, and he listened intently to the sermon. And then when it came time for the invitation, the pastor said, now, if you haven't been saved, if you'd like to be saved, raise your hand. And his hand went up and he waved it until he was certain that it had been seen. And when the invitation was issued, he bounded out of his seat and raced forward to be received. But something interesting happened at his baptism. As he was coming up out of the water, he started clapping his hands and shouting, hot dog, hot dog. And the congregation just roared with laughter. But the pastor explained that this man had never been around church. He didn't know churchy words like amen, hallelujah, and praise the Lord. His word was hot dog, and he was praising his Lord as best he could. That man may not have had a great religious vocabulary, but... His understanding of what was happening to him that day was impeccable. Well, hot dog, ain't it great to be alive? And isn't it good to know that we belong to God? Life is a precious gift from God. Here's the second thing. And that is that if we realize it, what we understand is that God has placed us in a world of unimaginable possibility. Even in a troubled world, God has placed us in a world filled with wonder. And as Thanksgiving approaches, I am grateful that God has placed us in a world where there's so much possibility. Because Creative people have always found ways to take challenges and difficulties and turn them into blessings. You may be familiar with the name Duncan Hines, but what you may not know is how that name ended up on a cake mix box. There was a time when the name or the phrase Duncan Hines ate here was a household word here in America. When Duncan Hines traveled as a public relations man across the country in the 1930s, some of those hole in the wall diners and restaurants could kill a person. Duncan Hines liked to eat, so he began taking notes of the best places where he ate. He, 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 as he crisscrossed the country, he filled notebooks filled with these places that he thought were places that people could eat and enjoy. And he would even ask locals for recommendations, sometimes eating up to six meals a day and always taking notes. But before long, he published a book and people would call him up on the phone and ask him for recommendations of places to eat during an upcoming trip or vacation. 
In short, the name Duncan Hines became synonymous with good eating. And when a businessman decided that he wanted to go ahead and introduce a new uh, uh, group of food products, he wanted to link it to the name Duncan Hines. And the rest, as they say, is history. Duncan Hines didn't set out to be a household name, no. But he was a person who liked to eat and he felt there needed to be a guidebook for travelers who also like to eat. Unnecessary potential. Here's something else from this text. And that is, there's a law of nature. What we don't use, we lose. One agnostic called Jesus cruel for suggesting that those who have will get more and those who have little will lose what they have. But Jesus wasn't being cruel. He was just stating a law of life that if we use what we have, we will develop more. But if we don't use what we have, we'll lose what little we do have. We can see this in the aging process. If we work to keep our minds alert in our 20s and our 30s and our 40s, then there's a good possibility that they will still be able to be functioning well and, and help us be alert when we're in our 60s, our 70s, our 80s, our 90s. It's true that disease sometimes takes a toll, but the reality is what we don't use, we lose. And we see this in other areas with other talents and with other gifts. And if you've ever played a musical instrument and quit playing, you know how that works, right? The great violinist, Nikolai Panjanini gave and willed his violin to his hometown of Jena, Italy, with the stipulation that it never be played again. What a pity. Because its lack of being used and handled, the wood rotted in the instrument. Whereas an instrument that is played frequently and is handled can not only be preserved, but can sometimes develop even richer tones over the course of hundreds of years of use. Pagini's desire resulted in his precious violin rotting in its case. You see, what we don't use, we waste, and what we don't share, we can't take with us. Now, here's one more thing. If we do use what God has given us to the glory of God, then God will take our meager gifts, multiply them, and then use them in ways we never dreamed possible. Someone has said, your life is God's gift to you. What you do with your life is your gift to God. But it, it goes even beyond that. I read about a man in Memphis who opened his trunk one day to find a dusty wrapped package. It was a trash can he had bought for his wife for Christmas and had forgot to give it to her. So he went home and sheepishly presented her the gift. And when she saw it, she broke into tears of joy because you see, today was their wedding anniversary and she thought he had forgotten. We may be impractical givers, but the amazing thing is, is that God can take what we have and make some remarkable, incredible things happen. Jesus was a doer. And I think Jesus likes doers. And what Jesus did on the cross for us has reconciled us with God now and forever. Hot dog. Praise the Lord. Isn't it great to be alive? Isn't it great to know that our life can be used to do great things. And that when we turn our gifts and our lives over to God, God will use them to make the impossible, the amazing happen. And to that I say, hot dog, hallelujah, and amen.
Let us turn our hearts to God, our breath and life, as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Gracious God, you give talents and gifts to all your people, and you equip the church to serve. Turn us from fear and self-serving ways that we use our talents to glorify you and encourage our neighbor. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have been our dwelling place from one generation to another. Sustain the life of the planet, protect farmlands and harvests, direct all people in wise stewardship of all the earth's resources. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You call us to honesty and integrity, instill these values in the hearts of all nations and their leaders. Free any who are oppressed, expose all corruption, and bring redemption to victims of injustice. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Where there is sickness or sorrow, bring healing. And where there is loneliness, reveal your love in community. We remember before you all who are listed in our prayer lists and all that we name now in our hearts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for the faith formation ministries of our church. Give to all children, youth, and adults who study your word the breastplate of faith and love. Shape us by your love and show us how to encourage one another. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Gracious God, you are a faithful in all generations. For the promise of life and rest and for the witness of those who have died in faith, we praise your goodness. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We offer our spoken hearts and those held in your hearts, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our well, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.